We now have the man of the hour, Pastor David. Woo, 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 woo. I feel like I'm on a, wrest <laughs> on a wrestling team or something here. <laughs> no more coffee for Mandex, that's it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's all stand. Praise God. How many know that it is by the unity of what we're doing together, this, pot, this actually this month in itself is how God moves upon us. And we need to recognize and realize that it is unity that changes everything. Amen? Unity through the Holy Spirit. So I just want you to raise your hand and say, Father, I'm here this morning. One, one, have, I have a desire to hear your spirit. Speak to me personally. Speak to us as a group, as a family, Lord God. Have your way here in Jesus' name. And we say? Amen. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Everyone should have received one of these. Do so you have one of these, two of these at least? If you do not have this in your hands right now, raise your hands and you will get one. Okay, that means everyone has a minimum of two. Well, over here, we need two over here. Two over there. Anybody else? Raise your hands. You got to have this in your hands. So I can't, I, can't, I can't start preaching, meaning lunch is going to be delayed for you. Okay. Praise God. Let's start with what the scripture says here. It says in Zechariah 4, 6, so he answered and he said to me, this is a word to Zerubbabel. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Remember a couple of weeks ago we were talking about the word Zerubbabel, amen. It simply means that he was born and raised in Babylon where he was part of the, uh, the, uh, the captives. And then they were going back to their hometown. And it doesn't matter where you've been in your past. What matters is where you're going in your future, amen. Stop focusing on your past. Oh, but you don't know what I did when in my past it was horrible. But they ain't going to change anything for your future unless you start focusing on what God has for your future. Your future rebuilding is more important than what you have been through. Look at someone says, your future is more important than your past. But by my spirit, how you choose to build with determine is longevity. How you built, are you going to build with the flesh? Are you going to build with the Holy Spirit? Which one are you going to build with? You see, the thing is this, you and I have that choice. You cannot just sit there and say, well, God, if you want me to do this, you're going to make it happen. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. It works when you move by faith. It works when you move because you say, God told me to do this. I don't know exactly how it's going to happen, but this is what God told me to do. And somehow he'll bring it together. Somehow he'll put it together. But I got to step out in faith. I got to believe what God has said to me personally. And it's got to be personal. You got to take it so personal that God spoke to you. Because if it's not personal and the trials and the tribulation comes, guess what's going to happen? You'll be the first one to give up. You'll be the first one to run. You'll be the first one to stop. Because it has not become personal. Meaning that you have to hear God speak to you. You got to be the one to say, you know what? God is leading me to do this. Well, my brother, my sister, how is God going to do this when you don't have the finances? Again, God told me he's going to provide. Amen. Well, I'm in this job now. And because I don't have the proper education, I'm not going to be able to get the job I want or the promotion I want. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to leave this job that I have. And go somewhere else. No. God could give you a promotion right there. Oh, well, but I don't have the education. God could bypass all of that. And I've seen it happen. Folks, I know people that have been in those situations and God has promoted them without the education. God will make the way. But you have to believe. you got to have faith that what God is telling you. Now, if God tells you to move, then you move. Amen. If God tells you to stay, what do we do? Stay. We stay. We wait on him. But one thing is for sure, you and I, I got, we got to make sure that we're hearing God's voice. 
You and I got to make sure that God is leading us. It's not our flesh. It's not our giftings. It's not what everyone else is telling us that we should or should not be doing. It's more about what God is telling us personally. Now, come on, folks. We know that it's obvious. If, you, if you're doing things that is not even godly to start with, then obviously you don't need God to speak to you. It's already in the word of God. Amen? So don't, so don't use that as, well, you know, God knows my heart. Forget that. God knows everyone's heart. <laughs> to know your heart alone. And that's why God says that the heart is desperately wicked. Who should know it? And you and I have to make sure that it's not about what we feel in our heart, but it's what we're hearing from the Holy Spirit. What is God telling us? What is God speaking to me? In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, I'm just recapping real quick. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. It is easy to fall for a lie of the enemy when we're not being led by his Spirit. If you're not being led by the Holy Spirit, it is easy to fall. Not that we would never fall, not that we would never make mistakes, but if we're honest about it, we could go back and say, man, I knew it in here, man, but I did nothing about it. I, did just, I just wanted my way. Oh, am I speaking to anybody out here? Come on. Hey, man, I'm, I'm the first one to say that. Well, well we, we all go on through that. Come on. We're like, oh, come on, man. You know, this feels good. This looks right. It sounds right. It tastes right. And this right. And that right. And this right. And then. Was a way that seems right unto men, but the ways of are the ways of death, according to the book of Proverbs. Sometimes we don't realize it's taking us to the wrong place. Or we realize it, but we think we're invincible. It will never happen to me. I got control. No. Listen, if others have fallen, then it means that you could fall too. So don't ever look at yourself, because that's pride. That's what that is. That's pride in you telling you that will never happen to you. Acts chapter 13, verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Hmm. For the work which I have called them. Here, years pass, and yet they're hearing the Spirit of God still speaking to them clearly. Now remember, I want you guys to remember this, that, like I said last week, everyone here hears the Spirit of God maybe not exactly the same way. Some people could say, I heard him with my actual natural ear. Some people say, I heard it with my spiritual ear. Some people say, I just felt the Lord move me this way, and I know that feeling when God moves me this way. Some people hear the voice of God by simply just knowing. I mean, they know that they know that they know that they know that this is of God. Amen? So we all hear God just in different manners, depending who we are and how we function. God knows who we are. Amen? And he knows how to speak to us. He knows how to get a message to us. Praise the Lord. How many times God tells us something, all of a sudden we watch this movie and it's like a confirmation. We're like, oh, man. Oh, we're driving down the street and we see this billboard. Oh, Jesus, come on, man. And then the next thing you know, we go to this place and we're like, someone says something. We're like, oi, come on, God, what's going on here? And God said, I'm trying to get your attention. I'm trying to get your attention. That's all that is. And you know what? Thank God for that. Because that's how much God loves us that he's trying to get our attention. He's trying to teach us. He's trying to show us. And that even when we do make a mistake, he's there. Okay, you might have to face certain consequences for what you just did right now, but I'm here for you. Now let's learn from this. Let's grow from this. Amen. And he'll teach us and he'll show us. Prayer and unity. Kept them humble to continue to minister to the Lord. To minister. To the Lord. Wow. That to me is, that verse alone is a powerful verse. They minister to the Lord. Maybe the reason we're not, we're not hearing God is because we're not ministering to him. Maybe the reason why God's not speaking to us is because we don't spend time with him. Come on. You see? If we're not ministering to the Lord, how are we going to hear from the Lord? And this is why it's good to minister to the Lord even in groups. Meaning we come together to pray together, to believe together, to come in agreement together, and then God speaks. I've been hearing God speaking these past 16 days. Well, to this is day 16, but the last past 15 days actually. God speaking through people. God speaking through the Bible studies, through the prayer meetings we have on Monday. God's speaking. You know why? Because ever since we set out to do that 31-day fast that we're doing, 
everyone is beginning to hear almost the same tuning in. Okay, this is what God is trying to say. And God is confirming it. God is showing it to us. Amen? That's because we're coming in unity, doing something together as a church family. Isn't that awesome? Is it, I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited for Wednesday more than any other day now. I'm being honest with you. So Sunday is always my excitement. Always, like, yeah, I get to preach the word of God and praise the Lord. I get to see the people of God. I get to hug them. I get to talk to them. I get, that's why I like to spend that time after service talking to whoever needs to talk to me. I sit there. I don't, I don't try to rush out of here because that's, I just love that, that one face-to-face, one-on-one. Amen? And, and, and even though we do Bible study on, on, on Wednesdays uh, through Zoom, amen, I'm excited because I'm excited to hear the ones that are going to teach that class that day. I want to hear what they're going to say. Because that tells me that out of the two and a half, three months that we've been teaching the, the, the how, to be, how to disciple someone, they're learning something. And let me tell you something. Every week, God is doing something. I can't wait for Wednesday already to see the, the ones who are going to teach. Because for those who might not know what's taking place... What we've been talking about for the, or teaching about for the past three months in discipleship class has been how to disciple others. See, a lot of people say, oh, I've been disciple already. But can you disciple somebody else? That's three months ago we started doing that. Now, for the past few weeks, I think this will be the fourth week, actually, we've been, what we've been doing is a little bit different. I've been saying, okay, I want people to volunteer that's been in class for these past three months on Wednesday's Bible study. You tell me what you're going to teach and you do it. And all of us are going to listen. And you know what the cool thing about this is? Not only are they teaching, but we're making it a little bit harder on them. Because we say this. We say, okay, now, this is what we do. We're going to make believe that everyone that's hearing this teaching, we all got saved. Just a week ago only. So we're going to ask you, ask you questions based upon we just got saved a week ago. And let me tell you something. Some people come in with some crazy questions, man. <laughs> oh, I just got saved yesterday. I don't really believe what you're saying to me. But how can I really believe what you They come out with the craziest things, to be honest with you. But it's good. You know why? Because it's challenging that teacher of that day to be able to go beyond their comfort zone. Folks, if you cannot get out of your comfort zone, the Holy Spirit is not going to speak to you. Because the Holy Spirit... It's the Spirit of God, not your flesh. The Holy Spirit lives in you, but you got to get out of that comfort zone of the flesh to hear the Holy Spirit speak to you. Amen? You, you and I got to get, you know, we got, we got born again, meaning that we don't do the same thing we were doing all these years the way we were listening. We got to listen a new way, God's way. We're born in the Spirit. We need to know who the Holy Spirit is. The coolest thing happened to me yesterday. I was... In the front of the house, and exactly a white dove, just like that. I, I got the pictures on my phone. I started taking pictures. Was just sitting there in the grass in the front of my house, and one of my neighbors were talking. They go, "Oh, it looks like the bird, the dove is hurt." And so I'm like, you know, doves are very gentle, skittish type of birds above all the pigeon family, in honesty. So what I did was I, I approached it, taking pictures as slow as I can. But, of course, it starts moving, and I'm saying, oh, my goodness, I'm going to get a good picture here. And I'm doing this, and I'm, try, I'm trying to, like, okay, let me do this quietly. You know, I'm, like, moving slowly. And then I'm going. <laughs> and I'm there going. <laughs> and I'm, like, it's going to come to me because I'm going. <laughs> making the noise I think they might come to me. And I'm there with it going real quietly going. And then it goes on the fence of my gates, and the sun is behind. I take a picture of it, and I'm thinking, oh, yes, I want to get the right, perfect sunlight coming behind it. I'm doing all this for a bird. <laughs> Do you go that far in trying to hear the Holy Spirit and get close to the Holy Spirit? Do you go that far? Do you make the time to try to go a little farther, to try to hear the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit that important to you that you would try to approach it as 
as carefully as you can with holiness and reverence to the Lord, the Holy Spirit speak to me. I come in humbleness. I come in fear. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Do you make the cry of the heart, God, I need you. Father, I need you desperately. See, that's the sound that God is looking for. The sound of a desperate heart wanting more of him. Not just being satisfied where you're at. It, wasn't enough, it was not enough for me to just take two, three, four pictures that when it came to the sunlight, I said, I got to get that picture. I somehow got to figure out how to do it. The sun is, when, you hit the, when the sun hits your camera lens, by the way, it becomes a little blinding. But I was willing to do that because I, I wanted to get the right picture. Do you have the right picture of the Holy Ghost in your heart? Do you know who he is? I recognize a dove because I know how a dove looks like immediately. I know how a dove looks like. I, I was surprised. I have never seen a dove as pure and white as that. you see that picture in front of my yard. A dove. Many other birds, yes, but not a dove. Not like that. Not that size. It was, it was a huge dove. I was like, wow. Wow. I was, I'm not trying to make it my house spiritual. I'm not trying to do that in any shape or form, guys. But I, but I want you to understand. I wanted to have a closer look. I wanted to get as close as possible. And sometimes we're not trying to get as close as possible to the Holy Spirit. We're comfortable where we're at. That scripture I read earlier, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. That scripture is a very important scripture because it's showing us that we cannot do it in the flesh. We cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it the way we think it needs to be done. It's got to be his way. Sometimes we put religious things about what the Holy Spirit is. You know, I have a picture in my house. Some of you might have noticed when you have gone to my house, and maybe some of you have not noticed. It's a picture that, I'll be honest right here, not everybody's in agreement in my house that I should have that picture there, but it's like, you know, that picture stays there. It's that simple. I don't care if it doesn't match anything. That picture stays there. It's been there almost from day one that we got that house in the same spot. Actually, if I take that picture off, that portrait out, the color of the paint might be different in the background from being there that long. But it's a picture of what Pentecost might have been, might have been, where you see the apostles, the leaders coming together, and all of a sudden you see a flame of fire over them, which represents the Holy Spirit. And you might say, why do you put that, why is the significance of that picture for you? It ain't going to do nothing to my house. It doesn't make my house any more spiritual. It doesn't make it, it doesn't change anything. I could put it out, take it down. It ain't going to change anything whatsoever. But it's for me to walk in as a reminder that the Holy Spirit has come down in here, in here. That's all that is. Nothing else. That picture when you walked into the sanctuary, before you walked in, when you walked into the lobby actually. Put it a few months ago. A simple picture of Revival. How revival used to be and how we need revival again in our country. How we need revival in our church. How we need revival in our own lives. That's all that is. It's a reminder of what we need to remember. You know that in the Bible, I don't know if you guys knew this, but you know that in multiple times, probably a few hundred times in the Bible that God says remember. Just look up the word remember. God doesn't want us to forget what happened. God doesn't want you to forget your experience when you first got saved. Because if you forget your experience, then you're not going to live for God the way you should. Because you get comfortable where you're at. He doesn't want us to forget what took place. Why do you think that communion is always remember what the communion stands for? There's a reason behind all that. 
is to remember. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. This scripture in itself is interesting. For what a man knows, say knows, the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him. Look what it says here. Look what the word says there. Amen. Even so, even so, wow, even so, say even so, even so, though you have your spirit of life in you, and this is what you know, this is what you are comfortable with. He tells us, even so, no one, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Too many times we rely on ourselves and not on God, on the Holy Spirit and what He knows. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of what? The Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of God who's from God that we may know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Say, by God. These things, the Word of God says here. Amen? What does it say? These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teach, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. There's a comparison here that he's trying to show us. This is what I'm trying to show you. This is what I want you to understand. This is what I want you to know. But the natural man does not receive the things of God or the things of the, of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You see, you and I cannot know the things of God unless we are spiritually discerning what's actually taking place. I could say this is how I feel, but it's not necessarily what God is showing me or showing you or telling us to do. It could be just simply a feeling that we have. That's why we need to know the Holy Spirit and what he's trying to show us. Man knows only by the spirit of man. When you, before you ever got saved, before you ever knew Jesus, everything we did was based upon what man taught us and what we know. That's all it was, nothing else. How many of us have gotten in trouble because of it? How many of us went to the deep end because of it? How many of us could say now, my goodness, I wish I know now. I wish what I know now I could have known back then. Amen. Come on. Right? Because we did it based upon the spirit of man. That's all we did. Only the Holy Spirit knows God. That's it. So when you and I got saved, we received the Holy Spirit in us. And by receiving the Holy Spirit in us, amen, now, now watch this. I want to I be careful how I say this. Just because you have the Spirit of God doesn't mean you know the Spirit of God. The question is, are you listening to the Spirit of God? He's in us. The Bible makes it clear he's in us. But the choice is up to us whether we want to listen to what he has to say. That's our choice then. We got to choose what we want to do. You cannot know the things of God by yourself or by, the, by your natural intellect. Your intellect. How many times, let's be honest here, those have been saved long enough, you really thought it was of God because your intellect told you, your gifting told you, come on, and you found out it was wrong, right? Because it was not the spirit of God, it was your flesh. Our flesh will speak to us continuously unless we stop it by allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to us continuously. Remember, the Holy Spirit always wants to speak to us. It's up to us whether we want to listen or not. That's why in the book of Revelation, he who have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. Only through a true born-again experience can you know God. Now, I know this is going to get me some controversy and trouble sometimes. Listen, if you're not saved, you're not saved. It's that simple. No, but I'm in the process of getting saved. You're not saved. There is no process. Either you get saved or you're or either you're saved or you're not saved. It's one or the other. There is no in between. Well, God, I die right now. You know, you know, I was in between. You know, I was like, come on, God, let me in. And it's like, no, it doesn't work that way. Either, you're, either your name is written or it's not written. It's one or the other. And this is the thing that we need to understand. You know that God made that clear to me. And I'm so, that's why I don't worry about what I say. 
when it comes to this part, that's for sure. When I got saved, God made it clear to me. God told me, there's many of you in my church today who don't know me. That's how God spoke to me when I got saved. He made it clear to me because I thought I was saved. Because I knew about God. I knew, well, I knew what I thought I knew. Amen? It was a religious belief of what I was taught as a child. That's all that was. Never an experience. Not until you get an experience can you say you're born again. Something has got to happen. Now, all of us get experience different ways, all right? Some instantly, and some people is like, it is a process, but they're like, it gets to the point, they're like, no, I know I am safe because I do believe in Jesus Christ. I love God with all my heart. And whatever I have to do to change my life, I'm trying my best to change it. It might be difficult sometimes, but you do admit to it and you want to know how to change your life in order for God to be glorified in your life. If you know him, in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. Remember what I said about the voice of God. We all hear God differently and we don't hear God all exactly the same. But nevertheless, the Bible says, Jesus said here, my sheep hear my voice. Meaning, if you don't hear his voice in whichever way God speaks to you, then you're not his. You're not his. And you need to give up. You need to surrender. I know how that is because that's where I was a long time ago. I thought I knew about God. But it was not until finally it came into my heart to say, God, I'm not leaving this place until you show me who you are. That's how determined I was that day. Before, I thought I was saved. I thought I was a Christian because I was told, say this prayer and you're saved automatically. No, there is not a single prayer in the world. That's going to save you. It's not a prayer. It's a decision we make to follow him. It's a decision we make to come in agreement to what he has to say and say, Lord, you're right. I am a sinner. Forgive me. I want you in my life. Lord, I know now I need you to forgive me for my sins because I'm not going to make it any other way. It's a decision that we make. And accept him for who he is. It's not religion. It's not what you were raised with. It's a personal experience, a one-on-one -on -one experience. The Holy Spirit teaches you to. You see, here's the thing about it. When, the, when you get saved, and you re, because you're receiving the Holy Spirit when you get saved, the Holy Spirit teaches you to change this, change that, do this. Do that. The Holy Spirit speaks to you. Surrender your life to God. The Holy Spirit tells you what to do. And again, you might not even know what's going on, in all honesty. But you know this. There's a hunger and a thirst in you to know more about him. And that's how you know the difference between I thought I was saved because someone told me to give a, say a prayer to, no, no, listen. I know I'm saved now. That's for sure. I know that I know because I know what God spoke to me. I know what he's doing to me. No one has to give me a book of the do's and don'ts anymore. It now comes natural. It comes natural. Listen, two weeks after I got saved, I went to party. I didn't, I didn't know. I, I just got saved. I didn't, I didn't know any better, man. I was having myself such a good time, man. I mean, I was there partying, dancing. Oh, my goodness. I was all night there. Woo, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And during that time, something in here was knocking. Knocking in my heart. But my flesh was so used to the party, so used to the dancing, so used to everything. I was so used to it. That that knock was so soft, and it was I could barely hear anything. The music was louder than the knock. Come on, say amen. The pleasures of sin was louder than the knocking. But let me tell you something. I had a good time. See, for people to say, well, you know, 
If you're really saved, you're never going to have a good time. That's not necessarily true. The pleasures of sin, the Bible talks about in Hebrews chapter 11. The pleasures. It's, if it wasn't pleasurable, you won't be doing it. Amen? But the Holy Spirit was knocking as I was having all that pleasure. When I finally was about to go home and I was able to kind of quiet myself driving home. The Holy Spirit. In here, now the music was over, the party was over, but the Holy Spirit was still here. This was on a Saturday night, so I was I was gonna get up. I was gonna get up for church. I just got saved two weeks ago. Not just church service, I was going to first Sunday school, then service. I was always I was for those two weeks, I was there for Sunday school. I'm going to Sunday school. I went to I got up. But let me tell you something. I got up feeling that the Holy Spirit was grieved in my life, and I didn't know what to do. I was like, what did I do wrong? And it was simple. God was already speaking to me. He says, don't do that again. And I was like, the grieving I felt in my heart was so deep. I, I said, I am not, I don't even want to do that again. Because the Holy Spirit in me was so grieved that I cried. I was like, wow, Lord, I did not know. And the Holy Spirit started teaching me little by little, little by little. We don't learn overnight, folks. It's, it's a step as we do things, he teaches us, he shows us, he begins to do this, he begins to do that. And, and you know what, here's the thing about it. What he's doing in me, I cannot put that on you. Did you hear that? What he's doing in me, I can't put it on you. Because God was dealing with me at that time where I was at. But as time went on, he was dealing with me. Not once in a while, the way in the beginning, it was every day showing me something, teaching me something. And I had to learn. I learned through my mistakes. Amen? And I learned through the things of, because I was obedient to what God wanted me to do. The Holy Spirit teaches you to, and that's between you and God now. Because when the Holy Spirit is in you, you don't need a rule book, folks. The Holy Spirit in you teaches you. And it's not for you to judge someone else either. Oh, my God, what are you doing? Leave it to God. That's between them and God. You're not their Savior. God is. Amen? They don't have to answer to you. They have to answer to God, not you. So we have to be careful. It's not by, now look at your magnet there. Come on, look at it. You have it? Look at it. What does it say there? Not by, and it's a blank. But by his spirit, says the Lord. Now, let me explain to you why did I leave that blank. Not by your intellect. Maybe you're that person who's super intelligent and everything is based upon what you receive intellectually. Maybe it's not by your gifting. You're very gifted. And so you, everything is based upon your gifts. It's by the Spirit. You see, don't let whatever you fill in there to be the hindrance to the Spirit speaking to you. It's by His Spirit. Here's the thing about it. We all go through this. In every stage of our life, we go through something that we don't see sometimes. And the reason why this was created was very simple. I want you, you all should have received two of them. I want you to put one on your refrigerator because that's where most people go to to eat. One in your office, like on your computer. It's, ma it's magnetic, so it will stick to the computer. Your computer. Wherever you work. So you could say to yourself, not by, okay, Lord, but it's by your spirit. Okay, Lord. Show me, Lord. Teach me, Lord. How do I do this? 
How, how do I not allow my intellect to get in the way when it's difficult like this to see the difference? Lord, how do I allow... How do I not allow this gifting that I have to get in my way? How do I not allow? Listen, for many people, it could be many different things. It could be some sin you're involved in. Maybe you think that drinking is the way that's going to help you have peace in your life. And it's like, no, it's not by drinking, but it's by his spirit. No, it's not by sex, but it's by his spirit. No, it's not by arguing all the time, but it's by his spirit. No, it's not by me thinking that I'm right all the time, but it's by his spirit. No, it's not by me pointing the finger and criticizing someone all the time. No, it's by his spirit. If you look at it that way and you really think about this and you do this every day, let me tell you something. You're going to be surprised of how God is going to begin to move upon you. Just a simple task that we're doing this month, the 31-day fast that we're doing right now. I'm hearing testimonies of people telling me, this is what God is doing in my life now. I'm seeing changes take place in people's life because of a simple 31-day fast that we came in agreement to be a part of, of just 10 minutes, 10 simple minutes of glorifying God. Glorifying God for who he is, not because we want to be entertained or just relax with the music, which is nothing wrong with that, but just 10 minutes, minimum of 10 minutes, of God, I glorify you for who you are. Jesus, you're all that I need. Oh, Lord, I, I surrender all to you. Ten minutes of just worshiping him for who he is, not what you want out of him. Amen? But who he is. And then another ten minutes of praying, Lord, I pray for my, this person by name, not just all family. No, by name, Lord, I pray for this person. Lord, take the scales off their eyes that they may see your truth and live your truth, Lord God. And I'm telling you this, when you pray, God's been showing me this personally. As I'm praying for these people every day, by name, God is beginning to show me, pray for this because they need deliverance here. Pray for this because they have hurts over here. Pray, And I'm praying, and now I'm praying for their salvation and for God to take away those hurts all those things that are hindering them from getting saved. And then 10 minutes, very simple, 10 minutes. Proverb of a day. Today, today's a 16, so it's Proverbs 16. To read those 10 minutes. It only takes five or six minutes to read every proverb, you know, one proverb at a time per day. Take a minimum of 10 minutes. Okay, Lord, how does this proverb fit for my life? How do I live this out, Lord God? It's a book of wisdom, by the way. And when you do this, a change will happen because it's not by, but by his spirit, says the Lord. It's by his spirit that does this to you, that helps you, that teaches you. Let me give you a little testimony of this magnet right here. I was going to do a few more other things, but I, 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 I just feel the Lord just saying, close it out. This is what God showed me in this. I ordered this in December. December. Beginning of December, supposed to have been done at the end of December. The printers got a little behind. In January, he said, he, he, I'll get it done, I'll get it done, I'll get it done the first week. He didn't get it done. I'm saying, oh, hey, what's up with this? I call him up and I say, what's going on, brother? He's a brother of the Lord that I know for a long time. And he goes, he goes, Pastor, I'm sorry. Pastor, I have to apologize to you. I go, what happened, man? Be honest. He goes, it's in back order. I cannot get those magnets for anything. No one has them. This is a printer who's been around for, I think, 40 years or 40-something years. He's known. And he can't get it. He says, whenever it comes in, I'll make sure I get it done for you. But I cannot do nothing about it because my supplier is saying they're backed up already. They don't have any more. I say, you serious? I'm like, I'm preaching on this. I need this. I'm like, God, I wanted to give everyone something this month to take home. By the way, this is the scripture God gave me the first time I, when, I, when I started ministry was this scripture. And I was gun ho for this. So I say, okay, you know what, brother? All right. It is what it is. You can't change anything. If they're not making it because they're back, they're like, hey, what are you going to do? It's like during COVID. A lot of people didn't have toilet paper. You had to go hunt for it. Remember those days? 
Come on, you know it's true. <laughs> you went from the cushy toilet paper to the ones that were like, I don't know about this toilet paper, man. <laughs> we all went through that. And so I said, you know what, Lord? It is what it is. Thank you, Jesus. I'll work out when it works out. He calls me this past Friday, two days ago. He calls me in the morning. He goes, Pastor, what are you doing? I go, I'm over here in Kendall trying to get my, my alignment for my truck. I'm trying to find a guy that I'm looking for that I haven't seen for a few years. He goes, can you come here? And I go, what happened? I mean, he's all the way in Hialeah. I'm in Kendall. I said, I'm not going to go to Hialeah because you asked me to go to Hialeah. Amen. That's another country. I need my passport, make sure my visa is up to date, the whole nine yards. So I'm like, I don't know about that, Lord. So I said, brother, tell me what's going on. What is it that you need? He goes, I want you to come up because I have it ready for you. I go, you have what ready for me? I got your magnets ready. I go, nah, you told me, you just finished telling me that it was impossible because it was out of stock and your supplies don't have it. He goes, just come over. Of course, I went, I went to Hialeah. I get there. He's so funny. He gives me a box of only 10, little box. He goes, I did something for you. That's all I was able to do for you, 10 of these. I was like, well, thank you, Jesus. You know, I got something here, man. But I was like, but at the same time, I'm thinking, bro, you, you're messing with me, right? He goes, ah, I'm only messing with you, man. I got all of them for you. Boom, he brings a box, puts it there. He goes, you're not going to believe this. I said, why? He goes, I call my supplier and ask him, you told me you were out. He goes, yeah, we're out. He goes, yeah, but you just sent me. All the magnets I want? He goes, no, I didn't. He goes, I received the magnets. I have it right in front of me. He goes, no, I did not send you nothing. We don't have any. There is no paper trail where that magnet came from. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by his spirit, folks. If God wants to get something to you, he'll get it to you. See, we, we're, we're in this habit that we're ready to just give up. Well, it's not going to happen. You know, if it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. That's it. You know, it's in the natural. Whatever happened to the supernatural of God doing things? I was like, wow, brother. I'm going to give that testimony because you don't know where these came from. Your supplier says he didn't send it to you. So how did he get here? He goes, Jesus did it for you. For some reason, because I don't know I still how I got this and where it came from. Folks, that's God. This is a supplier telling the printers. And the printer, the owner of the printing company, is telling me. I'm like, whoa, this is the way God moves. We forget about how God moves in the supernatural. When no one else wants to do it, God will do it. When you think it's impossible, God will make it impossible. But we got to get used to knowing that it's by his spirit. It cannot be by what we think it needs to be. It's got to be by what he says it's going to be. God, God is sovereign over all. It's what he says. And we forget. Yes, we, he called us to collaborate with him. Thank God for that. Amen. That we are able to, can you imagine how beautiful that is to know that God has called us to collaborate with him when he doesn't have to? You do this, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. It's like, oh, we're done. God sits back, he's chilling. And yet God says, no, I'm going to work with you instead. I'm going to collaborate, come on. Come into the kingdom with me like my sons and my daughters. And I'm going to show you what the kingdom is about. Folks, God wants to show us what his kingdom is about. He wants to show us things we've never seen before, never heard before, never experienced before. God wants to show us because he, listen, if there's a time that we need to hear from the Holy Spirit, now is the time. There is so much doubt, confusion, fear in the world right now, in the church right now, that we need to understand that it's got to be not by fear, but by his spirit. Not by doubt, but by his spirit. Not by anger, not by your past, but by his spirit. He wants to change things in our lives. He wants to show us who he really is in a greater and deeper way that we could ever had imagined. Let's all stand. Folks, I'm not even going to go over what's your key takeaway right now, in all honesty. God, God is trying to do something here. God is trying to show us, man. 
We need to wake up. We need to wake up, folks. We need to wake up to who he really is and what he could really do and what he's capable of. We need to take these magnets that I'm giving you. Remember, take two. Put one in your kitchen, one in your in workspace. And I look at it every day, God, show me how it is by your spirit. Show me, Lord. I want to know your spirit like I've never known your spirit before, Lord God. I want to understand like I've never understood before. I want to see things happen like, is, like I've never seen before, Lord. This is just a little tool to help you do that, nothing else. But it's have to be up to you. You have to be the one to sit there every day at your workplace or at home and say to yourself, not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. Not by might and power. Those two words, might and power, it's, but it's by his spirit. And so it gets into you in such a way that when an impossibility presents itself to you, you say, nope. It's not by that impossibility. It's going to be by his spirit. When a trial comes before you that you don't understand and you, things are coming against you so quickly and you don't know what to do, no, it's by his spirit. Lord, I'm trusting that you're going to get me through this or take this away, one or the other, Lord. I'm trusting you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to give me guidance right now. When you get a report that you did not want to hear, no, it's by his spirit. Holy Spirit, what's going on here? What's taking place? What do I need to do? What's my part in this? It's by his spirits, folks. It's by his spirit. And only by his spirit can we do this. I want you, as we play the worship song we're going to play now, I want you to just simply do this. I want you to surrender yourself. Surrender the fight that's in here. Surrender the fight that's in here. You know what I'm talking about. Mentally, you're going through this. You're saying this to yourself. You're constantly going back and forth. You're like, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? The fight in here is that I'm not going to do, ah, do whatever I want to do. It's my will, and it's what I want. No, give up that fight. Surrender that. Bring it to the altar, God. Here it is. I surrender it to you. I don't know how, Lord, but I'm taking a step of faith that somehow you're going to work this out for me. I don't know how you're going to do it, Lord, but I'm believing you're going to do it because I know I can't. My power, my mind, I, I've tried, Lord. It hasn't worked. So I'm going to bring it to you instead, God. I'm believing you're going to do the work. Go ahead, play the music. And I want you to just, folks, please, forget about what's around you. Just simply come up and just surrender that. Just bring it to the Lord. Say, God, I don't know how. But here it is, Lord. I'm believing you. I'm believing you, Lord. Can we do that? Just surrender whatever it is. And again, no one else might know what it is in your life. And it's okay. This is between you and God anyway. It's not, it's not for anybody else. It's for you and, you and God. Nobody else. Come. I'm praying for those right now that are watching online. Lord, that you bring the miracle to them, Lord God. Father, that they'll be able to stand today and from this day forward, Father God, and be able to proclaim it's not by might, not by power, but by it, but by your spirit, says the Lord. This is what the book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6 says. What I just finished saying. Don't go by your might. Don't go by your power. Don't go by what you think it is. We need to trust in the Lord. We need to obey what he has to say to our hearts. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal himself to you like never before. Because Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. But I will set a comforter. And he will teach you. He will guide you. He will direct you. He will convict the world's sin. He will be the one. The Holy Spirit is as if Jesus was physically with you right now. The Holy Spirit wants to show you things that you've never seen before. We are not to stay in that comfort zone. In that zone of being familiar with, I'm okay here. This is safe. No, it's not. Because God is always moving forward. He's always doing something. 
And that's what he said, he who have an ear, let him hear. We need to hear the Holy Spirit, folks. We need to hear the Holy Spirit like never before. We need to hear, we're living in a time right now that we need direction from God for our own personal walk. For what's taking place in the world, what's taking place in the church itself. The believers should not be the one with fear and doubts the way they are now. Many of them are. Where is the faith? Where is the faith in believing what God has said to believe in? Surrender whatever it is in your life that needs to be surrendered. Maybe you need healing. You know what? Surrender that healing to the Lord. I said, Lord, the doctors couldn't do it. Can't do it. No one can, but you can, Lord. Lord, your word says, by the stripes upon Jesus' back, I'm healed. So, Lord, I want to stand on that by your spirit. I want to believe on that because your word says it. Maybe you're behind your bills. But the Lord says that he will provide as you are faithful. Notice that the Bible always says as you give to him, he always gives back to you. Give a dollar only. So God gave you $10. Then you give $10, so God give you $100. You start where you're at believing and stretch yourself one more time. I'm going to stretch myself further than I did before. I've seen it happen. No one can tell me it's not possible. I've seen it happen. Maybe there's a problem in your job that you can't solve. There's someone there that you cannot stand. But you don't use that word because we're Christians, amen? We're just praying for the brother and the sister. But in all honesty, there are very, a lot of annoying people around us sometimes. Folks, give it to God. God could change their heart. Or maybe God needs to change our heart. Too many times we're looking for God to change someone else and God is saying, I'm trying to change you. Maybe you have a decision to make and you can't just simply make up your mind because you really have not sought the Lord. It's by His Spirit, folks. Give it to Him now. Let Him do the work. Let Him be the one. You're not sure about something. Lord, if this is of you, looks good, sounds good. But Lord, if it's not of you, shut the doors. Shut the doors, Lord. So I'm believing in faith. I'm believing your spirit to, li to guide me, to direct me, to lead me where I need to go. Lord, the promises you gave me years ago has not come to pass. You wait on God by the spirit because if you really believe in it and you believe God spoke to you, then you don't move from where you're at and what God told you. You stand until it happens because it shall happen. God is not a man that he will lie. Promise, we're the issue. Sometimes we're not really believing God. Or sometimes we're in a position not to be able to receive because we're not ready for it yet. And that's why the Holy Spirit will guide you, lead you. He'll show you what to do. He'll give you the hope that you need where you need it at. But you got to believe in him. Father, we thank you because, Lord, we believe for supernatural miracles, events, different things take place this week, Father God, in our lives. That you will show up in ways that we have not seen before. We thank you, Lord, that you will reveal to us your glory. You will reveal to us your plan. You will reveal to us the next step to take. Lord, as we remain faithful and seeking you and ministering to you, as your word said in the book of Acts, when they ministered to you, then you spoke to them. Then you reveal yourself to them. Oh, Father, we pray that we will learn truly how to minister to you, Lord God. Show us, teach us, Lord. We desire your presence. We want more, Father God. We're not satisfied spiritually where we're at. We want more of you, Lord, more of you, Father. 
So, Lord, we thank you and we believe that this week we will see more and that we'll be able to come with a testimony, knowing that it was you and it wasn't us, but it was simply us having the faith to hear your spirit and the obedience to obey your, your spirit and what he tells us to do. In Jesus' name we say, amen. amen. Take this refrigerator off. If you need a third one because you have a third office or whatever, take it. Amen. This is for you to say to yourself. Look at it and let God, let the Holy Spirit move in you. God bless you and I'll see you guys next week.